I haven't even officially uh, started the teardown of the, my uh, Tesco's huddle yet, and I've come across a very bad, sloppy mistake by whoever built it. See that? That, my friends, is a loose screw floating in the breeze, rattling around inside. Where is it supposed to go? Uh, there. On top of that, this screw's loose. I haven't even undone any of these. Why are they loose? This should not happen internally in a product. Oh man, and the design, the actual layout. You know, you've got nice metal chassis here that holds everything together. Badass battery, which still doesn't give it a long enough battery life. A very nice little speaker system, you've got your Wi-Fi module, you've got probably your processor module, I haven't looked at any of this in detail, you've got probably the main memory, and I'm not talking about RAM, I'm talking about ROM. But you know, it's all very nicely laid out, and then you come across a loose screw just floating around in the breeze. That could have easily shorted something out and done permanent damage, and that would not have made me happy. Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9. Today's video is about this. The Tesco's Huddle, and more importantly the first generation one. Which, we're going to do a teardown of. And, we're going to be doing a teardown of something that works, because we haven't done that for a billion times before. So, without further ado, let's turn the device off, because we don't want to potentially brick it. And, crack it open because why the hell not? Before we crack it open, let's just go over the ports. First we have the headphone and the microphone. Do not do what I did and think it's a reset and stick your pin in there because you ruin your microphone and part of what we want to do today is actually repair that particular uh, damage. We've got an HDMI port out which is flaky at best and outright broken at worst. Around the side here we got diddly squit. The bottom we've got your standard sort of USB port you get on mobile phone type devices. If we can get the camera to focus. No we can't. Because the camera's being a bastard. And around this side we have an SD card slot. Apple. Wink wink. All tablets should be equipped with these. We got your standard volume. And of course your power button. And on the back you got Two speakers, got full stereo, and of course a, I think it's a one megapixel camera, but it does for like technical information and whatnot. And of course a little like Skype cam, which is pretty god awful. As well as a nice touchscreen interface, which is covered in fingerprints. Yeah. Under the cover, which has Made in China on, because what isn't Made in China these days? Oh yeah, I've got to know. There's your reset hole. We're about to see the reset button. We lift the back off and about 40% of it is battery and it's a reasonable, reasonable battery because it's 4,300 milliamp hours, 16 watt hour, 3.7 volts. So it has a single cell voltage although this is probably a multi-cell battery complete with charge controller. So bear with me and we will zoom in into the back electronics and just have a quick overview of everything. So at the top here we have where the microphone is that we want to replace, the headphone jack. No, 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 we're not doing another crappy teardown because I ran out of memory. So let's do this thing properly. So yes, I've cut out a lot of the original go over of the motherboard, so we go over it again. So here we have the microphone which we've just replaced in this case, well replaced a few days ago now. Headphone out. Now this is a, uh, duh, 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 it is a low power stereo audio codec of headphone amplifier. Basically this is the BSD that does the conversion and is a nice also low cost which is what these companies like especially this is a low cost tablet. We've got these two mysterious chips up here which we can't find the data sheet on because we've got silly ass part numbers the CPU bit we're keeping, so I'm only going to go over what I didn't say there about 
this is the only point in the design where you don't see different see differential pairs and on top of that these RAM chips will 256 meg and distractions but combine those you get 512 and of course there'll be an extra 512 on the chip as there's a gig of memory in the thing this is a 16 gigabyte NAND flash chip in fact I can dig up more details of it it's got a NAND function of movie NAND I do not know what that is so if you do do fill it fits into the 16 gig and the range can go all the way up to 128 gigs which is pretty damn big for a single chip and of course it's got a NAND 8 microcontroller plus microcontroller that these things are pretty much full computers in themselves because there's a lot of complexity to managing the uh, NAND flash functions this little beastie is a power regulator chip for the CPU also known as a PMU, power management unit, kind of given away by the inductors as well as reading the data sheet I'll be putting a link to all the data sheets I found mysterious little chips like these good luck that one is not I thought this one might be a 24C or something or 93C nope mysterious then we get over here hello Todd what brings you in here to be annoying probably this one's a mystery chip this one is a I just need to remind myself this one this one is an HDMI driver chip because it's got an HDMI port right about here we've also got some buffering can't see what those are, they're too tiny and I can't be asked to set up my microscope camera this one is the RGB chip for the actual LCD, drive the LCD this is where the GPS and uh, GPS and Wi-Fi live uh, still unable to identify exactly what they are but it is a Broadcom chipset and this is of course down here at the bottom is your touchscreen controller nice little chip there and that's all on to the rest of the video now this is the main CPU this is a rock chip RK 3188 now what it is is a quad core arm uh, arm 7 more specifically running at 1.8 gigahertz per core 32 bit CPU architecture is apparently Harvard yes I am actually looking this up online sorry if that offends you uh, it's got a GPU which is an ARM Mail 400 uh, uses the OpenGL and uh, uses CMOS display technology next to it you're going to have the main RAM which is a total of a gig in this unit so there'll be two 512 units unless there's further RAM on the board and I imagine this would be where the main bootloader and firmware and that is because we're going to take this board out and flip it over and look at the other side and of course hopefully replace that microphone which we killed so bear with me why I liberate the circuit board oh well, yeah you've got GPS antenna so the uh, Wi-Fi module also has uh, well the GPS is near the Wi-Fi because GPS that's why I thought it was GPS and we got the Wi-Fi ah, wasn't so silly after all well 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 I was wrong about that that flash chip must be the main memory there's actually an interesting security vulnerability that allows anyone to read any data you put on these so be careful what you actually put on these but good news our microphone is soldered in via wires we should be able to replace that with a mobile phone equivalent quite easily so I'll go searching through my parts and see what I can do there
times like this, I'm glad I hoard busted mobile phones because I found an exact match microphone that's the exact same size. I just need to desolder it. Well, we got it. Trying to sol solder something that is smaller than your f small fingernail is a pretty damn challenge, especially when the pin pads are probably but a millimetre. Well, I don't often have success with such pop fine precision, but today was one of those days. That's if it works. Let's reassemble it. We seem to have fixed our microphone. Watch. Google, you are a twat. Wait for it. Ah, oh, I didn't say it back on the voice commands, but there we go. We can try it again with something else. EEPROM 9 I don't know why I did double EEPROM, but hey, that's fair enough I like cheese Man, this is the first time I've been able to use this function since I uh, shortly got it actually Woohoo! It's actually quite fun Now then, what should we ask it? Um, sex me up Google <laughs> yeah, I'm completely immature. So, let's go over a detailed out overview of the chips on the motherboard. Now that we've repaired our particular predicament we had. Close your little bastard. There we go. Yeah, so we can uh, do fun with that now. And we can use Skype on here, which is, because this thing's actually really good for Skype. Just don't mistake that top hole for the reset hole, or you will regret it. And you'll have to solder microphones which are basically microscopic. So to crack this thing open is relatively easy. You need a knife, preferably a sharp one like this, and make sure it's thin and then you have to get into the side like this and just pop up. Now it's a bit awkward but it is... Oh shit. <laughs> God damn it, I've done this a million times before and... Uh, I'll have to pause the camera.